Previously on the monsters inside me. I will not kill my father! You, of course, were losing the war. Come on! You know him! You left me to die! 1968 Camaro. It was a dark, beautiful baby blue. And now, the continuation. Sometimes within my skull's dusty bookshelf, rattling of some very old memories. Memories of when I was younger. Of my father and me and how he loved me. My mind is a library of images. Vast. Undisturbed. The station is controllable. You must come and see me. Oh, please. Oh, please. It's extremely lonely without friends, without family. I need someone to talk to, to love and care for. Is it just too much to ask for? Please. Guns. They're not toys. I... I never wanted you to have a gun, Julie. But you'll need it. It's just... Well, it's a big responsibility, Julie Embers. That's silly, Dad. I already know about guns. Yes, Jules. Still, if you already use a gun, we need to take... Precautions too. My daddy, I love him, but I'm sure he thinks I'm stupid. He is way too protective over me. And I just don't have patience for anything. Are you even listening to me? Because this is serious, Julie Embers. I'm here, daddy. Why aren't we doing this again? I lost Lisa. I'm changing too. I will need you to take me out on my say so. You will. No, I won't, Daddy. I won't kill you no matter what. (laughs) I'm... I'm alive. They... They pulled me from the wreckage. (sighs) Life didn't used to be this bad, you know. It was worse, actually. As they carried me from the burning wreckage, I could feel... Hunger. I needed to feed on something, but... I didn't know what exactly. Sleepers can speak. They're talking to me through my brain. It's so weird. They carried me past a rickety looking wall. Some sort of colony? That, that waterfall. Is that blood? <laughs> As I sank into the pit of substance I could only describe as blood, I felt myself turning faster. Then my memories came flooding back to me of when I lived in Harlem, New York. This episode is dedicated to Mandy Nittinger for being strong in the face of danger and always coming back for more. Hello and welcome to another episode of The Monsters Inside Me, starring Olivia Steele, Ty Anderson, Jake Sam, Mandy Nittinger, Taylor Ann Ashcraft, Dennis Collins Jr., with music by Dane Juris Smith, and Dennis Collins Jr. 
Story by J.W. Accent and co-written by Mandy Nittinger. <sighs> what a life. I was born Catelyn Spear to a single mother and my father, well, he left. Idiot. I was tough. I was fearless and I didn't care about anything but staying alive. I had to. Hey, baby. You going my way at all with that fine craftsmanship? I had ways to survive. The garage was good and clean enough to keep me happy. It had a roof and food, sometimes. I never wanted to go home. <laughs> yeah, real funny. Uh, hey, man, you got the stuff? Come on, I ain't got all day. You need something, I need something. Screw me, and it's the last mistake you ever make, homie. Sure, I got the goods. You up into the jungle pretty late, sweet stuff. I has another job. <laughs> Forget about it, I ain't no skank. Now quit jerking me around and give me my fix. You need it? Then work for me, and you can tweak all you want. On me. No charge. I promise. My word, as a respectable businessman. Sorry, I don't turn no tricks. Okay, cowgirl. You ain't my pimp, got it? No one is. Screw this, I can get my fix somewhere else. You're missing out. I hated going back home. Shetland. Callan, you're late. Oh, God. Ma, you're drunk. Again. Come on. Uh, let me help you up, or you'll never get to bed. Get off <gasps> me. Fine, wino. Sleep on the floor, then. Hey, you got dirty, <laughs> dirty, filthy hands, so you won't touch me. Good. Ain't nobody around here wants to touch you anyways. What did you just say to me, you stupid, ungrateful little piece no! of... Ma, please, don't hurt me! <laughs> hurt ya. I ain't gonna hurt ya, Catelyn. I'm gonna kill ya! No, please! See now, why I never wanted to go home? It was because of her. Mom. She was a waitress at some dump called Gravy Davies. Audi sexy lady. Hey, sweetie, what can I get you tonight? She didn't care. She never cared about anything. I was about a good time. Maybe I can drive you to my place? Sure. My shift ends at ten. And that's when it happened. Alone me. Oh, thank you. It's funny how life is sometimes. It was a drunk driver that killed them. I didn't even know about it until... until the next day. And you know what? I didn't care. But the Cinderella story isn't over yet. I was homeless. I fought for my meals and fell into a bad crowd. I worked the streets, gambling, whatever. Where's my money? No, 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 no please. I'll have it by tomorrow, I swear. It's overdue, cat. <laughs> hey, what? This here is none of your business. I have just made it my business. The nightmare was over. He adopted me. We lived on a farm together. My hero's name was Colonel Church. I learned the value of life. And even more importantly, I learned how to live. When I grew up, I joined the Marines and worked up the ranks to a corporal mechanical engineer. I wanted to be a better person, to make my new father proud. He passed while I served. 
But I will never forget Colonel Johnny Church and his kindness, or my trials on the streets of Harlem. Oh, please, 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 please. But that was quite some time ago, and I'm still here, drowning, red as far as my eyes could see. Another memory flooded in. A memory of a woman. A, a doctor. Dr. Gretel. Dr. Gretel. Uh, I met her when I was... Well, I shouldn't. But hey, what does it matter if my superiors are dead? They don't need to know. So close to my death. As I looked at the vials, I knew it was time. The facility had been breached, and I needed to think fast. My only option? To save myself and let Air Chadwick live. I ran to the safe room, and... The sleepers were pulling me from my watery grave. The dry, stale air dried me to a point. I felt the stickiness covering my body. Sweet. It was surprisingly sweet. I knew it was blood. Sleeper's blood. It had a strange human taste to it, too. And as I looked around, my vision was strange. Like thermal vision. Almost like something I'd have on my military headgear. I didn't need a helmet or goggles. It was... Just me. I saw men and women strewn up on wooden wall, and I saw my hands, my, my claws. The conversion was complete. I, I'm dying. Corporal Catelyn is no more. Lower your inhibitions and surrender. Sometimes within my skull's dusty bookshelf, I hear rattling off his very old memories. Memories of when I killed them. The voices that get louder and louder and then I... I hear my dad talk to me. And then I hear her. You sick of me yet, Julie? That's too bad. Because we're just getting warmed up. <laughs> Thanks for watching another episode of The Monsters Inside Me. Please remember to subscribe, to visit us on Facebook, to look up SoundCloud, and leave a comment on that. It is under the name The Monsters Inside Me, The Monsters Inside, or J Words.